Rush 102.7. All right, you ready? Check me out. Mark, Jerry, Benj, Chris, and Richard. Well done. Well done. Thank you. I did my homework. Thanks for being here today, guys. Oh, thank you. I mean, this is a pro, pro situation we got yeah, going on in here. we're it. pros. <laughs> so I have to tell you, evolution of a song completely stressed me out. <laughs> <laughs> you. I was feeling your pain. That was anxiety riddled. Well, thank you. And, uh, you know, we brought it upon ourselves, mm -hmm. um, but we really, we, we didn't feel much stress. Um, we felt confident. Yeah. Mean, we really, we really are confident in what we're doing because it's it's all it's all there already. We just got to tap into it. Yeah. And um, we were prepared to let the cameras roll until we found it. Mm -hmm. uh, we we lucked out a lot of times because of uh, the inspiration was there. So we just captured it. We got really lucky. I, watching that trailer um, really takes it home for me. It's nice. They all loved it, right? That was really great. <laughs> I love that New York played a pretty big role in at least one of the songs. Oh, New York plays a huge role in our in our career in yeah. a lot of in a lot of ways. We've spent so much time recording and performing here, um, writing here a ton uh, that it's it's really I would say a second home for the for the group. I mean, over the years we've done a lot of albums here, and um, it continues. It's like a movie out there. Yeah. You know, everywhere you look, there's a story. Yeah. Now, does the surroundings seep into the songwriting? Where where you're writing, does that affect it? Absolutely. You know, I just we we, we keep it honest. We write about life experience. If you're immersed in this city, it, you can't help but feel it and feel its energy, and that that permeates itself through through writing and everything else in one's life as well. Yeah. Okay. Now I have two tiny little complaints about evolution of a song. Yeah. Uh, little disappointed in your New York team baseball choice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to comment on it because I don't know which way you're, you know, I never, never, oh, look, that's the one thing we, we learn is we, we work with a lot of the teams. We, we kind of like oh, them so all. You can, okay. <laughs> you know but you, you were wearing a Yankees hat. Let's just. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess the room's on your side. Whatever. <laughs> we're the ones who got you here. That's okay, right. now the other complaint. Now, when you submitted the two songs and your manager and the two guys from Concord Music Group were listening to the songs, what was missing from that room? Us. No, go on. A woman's perspective. Oh, believe me, this is, a, this is a daily conversation with us. We always feel as if we are lacking in that. We need that perspective. That's why we have such wonderful wives in our lives that um, are always giving us advice, always leading us the right way, where we are programmed to go the wrong way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that perspective is there, but it wasn't on camera. No. And you're absolutely right. Yes. And we're actually um, actively um, looking to just work with so many amazing female artists and um, writers and producers. And we, we know that we absolutely uh, could benefit greatly from just... Yeah, I have to say, I disagreed with your manager when he was picking on the lyrics to follow me, follow you. I was team follow me, follow you from the start. I don't yeah. know how many of you are on my side with that one. Oh, nobody's got my back. <laughs> Nobody has my back today. This is awesome. So anyway, <laughs> thank you, Paul. I'm so glad you went with I Go Through, anyway, is <laughs> what I was you. trying to say. <laughs> no, that's good. Benj was on Team Follow Me, Follow You. I was. Yeah, so he's with you. Prior to the production process, once that went in, it, the song completely changed. I just couldn't picture it the, the way it is now at that point. And once we got in that room and really made it what it is now, everything changed for yeah, all of us, I that think. that one touched like, my heart, I got to say. Thank you. You know, it, and it... It, again, we, we, we always want to write songs uh, about life as we see it. We aren't interested in making up stories. We may embellish upon our, our own lives to make it a little more interesting, but uh, we're never out there looking for fake stories, you know? And this song, they all come from the same place. Uh, it's from us. So I'm glad you liked it. I do see similarities between the two songs, even though they sound different. Mm -hmm. They're about the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the deal with the typewriter in Nashville? So that typewriter was actually a gift from Tom Hanks to Nathan Chapman. Mm -hmm. So Nathan works with, um, with uh, Rita Wilson. Mm -hmm. um, and as a gift, as a thank you, and just a French, uh, friendship, 
thing. He gave him a typewriter. And I have recently gotten a typewriter to work with for my wife. And Nathan said, why don't we type it up on here? And that was it. It was au naturel. That was not staged. Oh, really? None of that was staged. I thought it, maybe he did that with everybody he works And now with. he does. Oh. He does. Now that he got that gift, at the end of this session, they type up the lyric. And uh, the 627 tattoo, I'm dying to know so, what that yes, is. So, yes, this is, um, I would say, lucky numbers. Okay. Um, on, on a phone back in the day, I mean, I'm going to date myself with this whole story, but right. there used to be things called pagers. <laughs> and, uh, well, we were just talking about typewriters. So. Okay, so now we're moving up 20 years to pagers. Uh, and, <laughs> right, yeah, so we would basically uh, leave a code behind what you were trying to do. And this one was, um, my wife and I were friends in high school. This was her code. Is that your wife? High school, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's right. I told him, you say that in every interview. And I, you, you say one more word, I'll put my name on your forehead. Please tell me that when you guys were together in high school that you wrote a cheesy, lame love song to try and impress a girl. No, we were just BFF. We were just best friends. No, but I was saying, you told you We didn't... weren't together in high school. Oh. She, she na helped me navigate through all my stupidity in high school. And then one day I said, oh, yeah, 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 that, that, that's the one. Okay. It's but, not all but this. But you never wrote a cheesy love song to try and impress a girl? Of course. Do you remember any of them? Yeah, I wrote one for my girl called Letter in My Hand. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I, wrote, I wrote, our first single was called Hey Girl, and that was, uh, yeah. No, but yeah. I mean like bad songs that you don't ever want to see the light of day. We're not bad songs, come on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, of course. Yeah, no, I write one out of every two. <laughs> All right, well, XX is the new album, which has got some old stuff on it, but I love that you guys use some tracks from uh, live at MSG. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it, was, it was tough finding that balance. We knew that quintessential versions of those songs, some were live and some of them were studio. So we went through all the archives and all of our material, and it was fun doing it. But uh, yeah, you know, MSG, uh, you can't tell the story with o of OAR without mentioning Madison Square Garden and us playing there. And it was a really magical time in our lives. And, we, you know, we were there. We didn't expect to really create a lot of noise there. We ended up selling it out several times. And when we were there, it was all our friends, all of our family. Everybody went and played there together, whether you were on stage or not. So it was a super important part. Stuff at Red Rocks as well, another big important place for us as well. You know. Yeah, uh, hey, I'm you. the one with the microphone. Pipe <laughs> <Right> down. <laughs> Paul's looking to take your job. Yeah. yeah I have to know, crazy game of poker. Yep. Has anyone ever caught a card in the eye? There's got to be some injuries with that song. Didn't you uh, last week? Nailed in the face in Denver. Really? <laughs> Usually it's on accident because people are just having a great time throwing cards. This guy was staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> and actually Mark called him out. Uh, with the security guard said, hey, get that dude. And he went to the wrong guy, and right when he went to the wrong guy, the guy hit me right in the face. Yeah, that could be dangerous. Yeah, I know yeah. who he is. Yeah. So we say, we appreciate everybody coming to the shows and bringing the cards and being all uh, passionate about it. Up, not at. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we do it. Yeah. Okay, now, it celebrates 20 years that you guys have been together. Right. I don't want to start trouble, but who knows you better at this point, your wives or the guys in the band? Oh, man. Sorry, I almost choked. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> what I was saying. And I guys... know what he choked about, so yes, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, yeah, exactly. I would say That answers your yeah. question, yeah. <laughs> okay. I was just trying to start up some trouble. And now, with your kids, are you going to be super disappointed with, if they like terrible music? No, no, because I, honestly, look, I, the way I look at music, it, it, I mean, look, I, I like, I respect and appreciate all music, you know, because somebody somewhere sat there and put their heart out on a piece of paper. And you may see it and hear it as, um, wow, this is corny or something, but someone's connecting to it. It's moving them somehow. So no, I never judge what other people like. I know what I like, and I don't care what other people like. Okay, you know? I'll, I'll ask it a different way. What if you play them Pearl Jam, and they say, oh, you know what, Dad? I don't like that. Oh, they wouldn't even make it through. Yeah, they don't I listen do to any of the music. All I the think. time. Yeah. I do that all the time. No, my little girl, she's the one who is um, a huge music fan. And um, she has her lineup, and we have this Alexa thing. Yeah. And um, she's always, I hear her in the other room, Alexa, play Katy Perry. And, um, <laughs> Alexa, play it. And she loves it, and she dances. So I've learned how to appreciate her loving her music, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to, 
when they're 10, then they have to listen to Pearl Jam. But until 10, they can listen to whatever they want. Let's put it that way. All right. Well, we've got some questions from these guys. But first, the StubHub question of the night. Joe from Manhattan. He's got the StubHub question. As a fan, what was your most memorable concert and where was it? Let's get these guys to, to talk, Chris. I have you know, a you, Benj. I got a good one. Uh, years ago, we played a festival and Foo Fighters were headlining this thing and it was pouring rain. And Dave Grohl's out there rocking his face off and just wind in his face, rain in his face. And, you know, he looks over his shoulder at the guitar player. These guys smiling. And, you know, everybody in the crowd's going nuts. Dave Grohl hawks a loogie over his shoulder. The wind gets it. The guy dodges it. Dave Grohl's laughing his, you know, his face off. It was a fantastic rock and roll moment. He hasn't changed his shoes since because it, it landed on his shoe. And he was like, Dave Grohl. I framed those shoes. Yeah. Never. Loogie okay. shoes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whose question is this? What is the inspiration for the song Caroline? Just wave your, there she is. Ah, oh, that's a very good question. Yeah, Caroline the Wrecking Ball is a song that came about, um, we'd written it with our friend Stephen Kellogg, whom we love. We love Stephen. I think he's one of the greatest lyricists of our time. Um, he's an incredible writer. And we've written a first installment of a trilogy, you could call it, called Irish Rose. Right, which is you know, your other favorite. Yeah, I can see why you like them. And the second one's Caroline the Wrecking Ball, and then we have another one that we're writing right now called The Ballad of Billy Mitchell, and that's almost finished. So yes, thank you for asking. What pranks have your bandmates played on you? Whose question is that? There she is. <laughs> you know what, Benj? Every day he goes, "Hey Jerry, take a look at this," and he goes like this, and I look. Every time, and it's like 10 times a day. Yeah, today is probably at four. Four, it's at least at four today. So. Got your mic, bro. Yeah. See, like he's doing it to me right now. <laughs> All right, what has surprised you most in 20 years together as a band? Whose question is that? Oh, right there. Uh, well, thank you, and it's great to see you as always. Um, but what was the question again? I'm sorry, <laughs> something about 20 years. What has surprised you most about being a band together for 20 years? <laughs> I still have a brain. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, and thank, thank you, Noel, for the question. But, but I, I would say the kind of ecosystem around OAR that's, that's, that's been created with, with the amount, the, the friends and the family and the fans getting together in the community and the, the, the people that I guess we've impacted has, has surprised me. It's not something that I thought about when I was 15 years old about doing this it was much simpler i just want to go play rock and roll in a band and that's it and to be 20 years into it and see people that have met at shows got married had kids they're bringing their kids to the show stuff like that it warms my heart it's awesome that's a great answer yeah. uh this is just a request please play on my way at stone pony oh we will absolutely no problem at all yeah Done. I love that one. All right, and the last one. What are your top three songs to play? Whose question is that? Nobody? Anybody? Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's I forgot my question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me and you, huh? Yeah, I know what's going on over there. Uh, <laughs> three songs, right? Um, for OAR songs? Oh. My top three OAR songs, favorite ones to play, would have to be, that was a crazy game of poker, absolutely, is, is probably number one for me. Um, number two is Place to Hide, and thanks. And number three is I Go Through, which I've just really started to fall in love with. I'm a fan of the song, so as I sit there singing it, I feel as if I'm just kind of watching someone else do it. And I, that has only happened with a few of our songs where I kind of feel that, that connection. Yeah. Well, I have to say too, watching Evolution of a Song, and then when you hear the song's done, you're kind of invested in it, you know? And I'm like, yes, that song. That sounds right. really good. That's right. Yes. And I think we want to hear you guys play some songs. Yeah. Yeah.